know it's been a while, but remember when the first Pirates of the Caribbean hit and it was shocking how much fun it was? Like, it was basically just one of the Brendan Fraser mummy movies on water, but it turned out to be a pretty good idea, and wasn't it fun to see beloved, hardworking, dues-paying character actor Johnny Depp sprinkle just enough of his not-at-all-overexposed-yet-goofy charm all over a big blockbuster and make it feel fresh and fun? And then remember how they decided to make two more of them that basically disappeared straight up the asshole of their own needlessly overcomplicated mythology, to the point that the DVD for the third one had footnotes to explain what the hell was going on in the story. And then remember how, instead of just being done with it, they actually made a fourth one that tried to be all simple again, but now it didn't work anymore because you're sick of Johnny Depp and the rest of this bullshit, but you still saw it and everybody else still saw it, and so now we're here we are with a fifth one. Oh, yes. I remember. Anyway, Dead Men Tell No Tales, big solution to the nobody asked for this problem of churning out at least one more Pirates movie, mostly for the Chinese market, is to pretend like not only did someone ask for it, but that we've all been waiting on plot points to be resolved in the interim, and or that there's a hitherto unremarked upon segment of the audience that's actually super nostalgic about the earlier days of this franchise and will respond with enthusiasm to what amounts to an openly acknowledged reworking of the first movie, and a deeply unearned big ending built around weak reveals and a pair of show-offy cameos. So, yeah, it's The Force Awakens, but for a series that never actually went away for any great period of time. Yay? But yes, here we are again, once more following multiple factions of human and supernatural seafarers alternately trying to claim ownership of the Black Pearl and or a new magic MacGuffin, all of whom are for related reasons also seeking out Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow because God forbid Johnny Depp not grace us with his presence again. Specifically, this time around, Brendan Thwaites is actually playing Orlando Bloom's now grown-up son who's on a quest to find the Trident of Poseidon in the hopes of undoing the then-risky downer ending of Part 3. Kaya Scotelario is a scientist looking for the same thing because of unrelated, vaguely defined daddy issues of her own. Javier Bardem is the captain of yet another crew of legendary ghost pirates who figure into Jack Sparrow's origin story and have come gunning for him now, as opposed to four movies ago, because he momentarily lost track of his magic compass. No, really, that's the entire impetus for the villains to get involved in the movie. Jeffrey Rush's Barbosa is back again with even less justification, and for some reason, David Wenham, of all people, turns up as an utter unnecessary six interested party, acting as though he had so much fun being a pointless distraction in Iron Fist that he just had to do it all over again. There's some general fainting in the direction of the aforementioned nostalgia payoffs that, in spite of everything, actually do manage to achieve a kind of almost impressiveness, mostly because, if this is in fact for real the last one, hearing that iconic Jerry Goldsmith theme kick in whenever one of the original cast comes swaggering back out for their cameo does make for a pretty good cheap pop. Unfortunately, the rest of it just ends up feeling like recycling instead of revisitation. The ghost pirates aren't as cool as the skeletons from the first one, Bardem is just a dull retread of Davy Jones, and even the wannabe over-the-top finale is an achingly obvious attempt to match the whirlpool sequence from part three, and it doesn't get there. The sole new idea on hand is a short sequence involving zombie sharks that's fun, but feels like it's over before it even begins. Most disappointingly of all, despite Disney and Jerry Bruckheimer having drafted the Norwegian directing team behind the very solid oceanic adventure movie Contiki from a few years ago, it doesn't feel like there's any attempt to really do anything inventive with the aquatic scenes. The best moments are still the heavily pre-visualized slapstick bits with Depp drunkenly flailing his way through a bunch of over-the-top, over-choreographed chaos, but we've seen this shit before and it's just so tired and perfunctory. The damn thing is just a hair over two hours long, short for this series, but by the time the house lights came up, I felt like I'd been watching it for a fucking week. One star, I can't think of a single reason for anyone to 